Hello fellow coin collectors, this is Glenn, back with another video. And today, we are going to review the 1914 Halfpenny. So, we'll look at the mint, uh, mintages, the varieties and errors, and how much they actually cost for a standard coin. So if you have a look at these two coins, we have two here, and you're wondering, hmm, you've got two coins, oh well, must have a good collection. But there's a good reason why I have these two coins, is that they are actually minted in different places. So, with this one here, you have a H underneath the small bar. That stands for Heaton. This one you do not. As you can see, you can't see a lettering there. And that was actually minted in London. So, um, Australia didn't actually produce any half pennies up until 1990, when they were first minted at Sydney so here is a 1919 and as you can see it has no mint mark you might mistake it for a London but historical records say yeah minted at Sydney and in 1923 they started minting them at Melbourne which was the mint actually produced most of the uh, half pennies up until about 1942 when Perth actually started minting them. So Sydney, and Sydney hasn't actually minted quite a lot of coins really. Um, probably one or two pennies. Um, a few silver, not that many silver actually. And I believe they start minting in the mid, probably 1926 is when they actually stopped minting coins. Um, but maybe I should do a video on the Sydney Mint. So the mintages for these two coins are actually pretty similar. So we've got the London Mint with 1.44 million. Then we have the Heaton Mint with 1.2 million. And the values are pretty similar. There's usually about a 10% difference. So if we look at the grade on this coin, we turn it over, we get a grade of fine. So, the book value for fine coins of both of these is actually $12. Um, yeah, that one's fine as well. So, about $12. So, if you're going to buy these on I don't know, eBay or another site where you get a lot of sellers, you're probably looking at about probably $6 because you know, half, half of what book value. That's generally how I go. If you're going to buy it off um, a coin shop, they probably wouldn't really deal in these coins because it's just, you know, they don't think it's actually worth their while. And they'll probably sell them in bulk as well. But probably for a bit higher than $6, they probably would. Unless they need to get rid of stock. So there's the price. If you want to buy it in very fine, you're probably talking about... Probably about twenty to thirty dollars. If you're looking at extremely fine, you're probably looking at about a hundred dollars. Almost uncirculated, probably two to three hundred dollars. Uncirculated, probably about a thousand. And there is, it's got choice uncirculated, so that's probably um uh, in between the sixties and seventies in the Sheldon system. And you're talking probably about one and a half to two thousand for that so they get really expensive when they're uncirculated and I'm not including the proof series because proof are generally uncirculated and uh, usually there's only about a hundred to two hundred proof coins of any year uh, that's if they actually issued some proof coins of this year so are there any variety or what we call as errors so in the coin book uh, Pre-decimal coin varieties by E. McConnelly, issued by Renix. Uh, it actually doesn't have any errors, but we have a two for 1915, a beleveled reverse legend. So that's a, a change in the reverse legend. You should be able to pick that up. Or blob on L. And double crossbar in H. So uh, these could occur on. Damn, I keep dropping. 
So what they're talking about is a double bar on the H. These can occur in other years because I've seen that a lot of errors that they haven't actually rectified do occur in other years like um, you know like the H between uh, the end between the two ends on the penny that occurs in different years and eventually they finally fixed it up that wasn't to the late 20s um, we got die cracks but you know they can occur on any date and if you have a die crack on a 1914 half penny, I recommend you probably get in contact with Renix and just uh, send them some photos so they can update their book. Um, you know, you got drop numbers. I wouldn't be surprised if you can someone actually finds a drop four or a nine that's actually leaning towards the left or right because they also occur uh, not so much on the half penny of this date. We're in the teens, but it does occur on the pay. You got wide date, so I'm not too sure if wide date actually occurs. So there, there is no reported errors that I know so far. So that is what you'll be able to find on a 1914 half penny. So let, let's just have a look closer look. So we put them together. Uh, get rid of the background and it doesn't look like there's any much differences the nines look pretty much in do they look in the same order yeah probably and where am I ever to um, I do have another two half pennies okay so these are my other two half pennies so I've got two of each Heaton and London Mint so as you can see it's a bit hard to put four together I don't see any differences but can we see any die cracks or anything on them uh, no I don't see any uh, if there is a die crack it'll probably be classed as extremely rare because they don't really occur probably because of low mintages uh, there's less chance to be a die crack because uh, there's less chance for the die to be crack if it's not actually being used as much. So, no, I don't see anything on that one. How about this one? Not any half penny, any. No, I don't see anything, which is pity. So, check your 1914 half pennies uh, for errors. If you've got an error. It actually increased the value by quite a lot, but none of these so far seem to have it. No. So anyway, that is my 1914 half penny review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, ring the bell button, and uh, just have an awesome coin collecting time. Thank you, and bye bye.